Those of you that have seen the video know I spent way too much money redoing our deck last fall, and now I can't even afford patio furniture to sit on it. No, but seriously, why is patio furniture so expensive? Even the chintzy stuff that feels like the leg could fold in at any minute is expensive. And besides that, we've been looking and there's really just not much that we really even like anyway. So combine those two things and it's the perfect reason for a DIY project. I'll have full build plans for these linked down in the description, and this is a super quick and easy build using only a few tools. I was wanting to go ahead and build these right out on the deck with just a job site table saw, miter saw, and drill to illustrate that better, but it is spring after all, which means lots of rain. So you'll just have to ignore all these other big tools here in the shop. We don't need any of that for this. We're just working with 2x4s and 1x4s here. For the wood, we decided to go with cedar, and for all the seats I built, it was right at $300 in wood. Not bad at all. And an option to save even more money, like less than half, would be just regular pressure treated lumber. That would have been around only $125 for the set of seats that I built. You can't beat that. But since I am working with cedar that can have some pretty drastic color differences, my first step was really sorting through my pieces and just trying to plan ahead so certain chair parts would match the best I could. From there I could chop the 2x4s down close to size and then rip off those rounded over beat up edges on the table saw. At this point the seat bottoms were all ready to put together and for that I'm just using exterior rated glue and screws. I did go ahead and lay out all my screw locations so they'd be even, just because that's who I am as a person. Originally I planned on using stainless steel screws and just leaving the screw heads exposed. I don't mind that look at all. It is outdoor furniture after all, some bird isn't going to care how it's put together, it's still going to fly over and poop on it either way. But the boss lady chose the option of plugs covering the screws, so first I used a 3 8 inch Forstner bit, so later I could come back through with 3 8 plugs to fill the holes. To make these actually comfortable to sit in, the seat is going to be angled, but that'll come when we attach it to the legs. The backrests are similar in construction, but here we do need to bring in some angled cuts, again for comfort. No one wants to feel like they're sitting in some bleacher seats out on the deck. With the angle cut on both ends of the vertical side pieces, next I ripped that same angle to match on the long edges of the top and bottom pieces. With all the backrests assembled, next I could get them joined to the seats with glue and plenty of screws. Next up we need some legs for these things. Again just using glue and screws to assemble these pieces is an option if you want, but I've designed in some half lap joints here. There are several variations, but if you aren't familiar, on half lap joints we're literally removing half of the material on two pieces so then they lap over each other with a ton of glue surface and so the two pieces are actually bearing on each other providing an incredibly strong joint. Besides the strength, the woodworker in me just liked the looks of it too to be honest. 
There are so many ways to cut these out. In fact, I already have a whole video on my channel showing several different ways. Using a circular saw, miter saw, router, bandsaw, you name it, are all options. So definitely check out that video if you don't want to use a dado stack and a table saw like I am here. You'll see you can get clean and accurate results with pretty much any tool you want. But here on the table saw, the first thing I need to get dialed in is the height of the blade to where I'm right on removing half of the material so when two pieces come together, they're flush. Next, I want to set up a stop block. And I have these Jessam stock guides on my table saw, so I'm just using that as my stop and setting that to match the width of my material. And that's it. Now I can get all the laps cut on the top of all the legs and on both ends of the horizontal pieces. With all those cut, next we need to adjust the stop block to cut the joints on the bottom of the legs. So I bump the fence over and make this first pass on all the legs so they're all the same. Lastly, I could move the stop block one more time to match the width of my material. Again, just slowly creeping up on the cut until it's a nice fit. If this was an interior project, I'd have all the confidence in the world and just glue holding these joints together. And realistically, it should be good here outdoors too, but I went ahead and added some screws for extra insurance. And the plugs add to the look I'm personally going for here anyway. After getting everything sanded and the edges rounded over, up next was adding the legs to the other pieces. To do this, I just clamped some blocks to the legs to rest the seats on. You'll see the blocks in the front are a couple inches longer than the back to bring in a decline to the seat and even more of an angle to the backrest. Here I did switch over to GRK structural screws, which have a shear rating of like 700 something pounds per screw and there's 10 of them here in this one chair. Definitely overkill, but might as well, right? Don't want to have a fella that has enjoyed a few too many burritos in his life come over and break something you built. Pretty embarrassing. But the way this is built with it anchored to the legs in multiple spots, these things are incredibly stout. Definitely not buying anything like this at the store. Last but not least are the 1x4 slats for the seat and backrest, and the ledgers glued and screwed on for them to attach to. One thing I wanted to mention here for you to check out if you do want to build these, at least for me here locally, cedar deck boards or treated decking if you go that route, was actually a lot cheaper than these 1x4s, and they're thicker and wider. The color was just way different than these cedar 2x4s I got, so that's why I stayed with the 1x4s, but just wanted to point that out as another money saving option. As you'll see, we did get cushions for these, which are just standard deep seat cushions that I ordered from Home Depot. I'll leave links to those along with everything else used throughout the video down in the description. But I wanted to design these so they not only look good, but were comfortable to use just straight up without any cushions if you wanted. To finish these off, I'm applying this outdoor defense oil. 
This is the first time trying this, so take that for what it's worth. But its main ingredient is pure tongue oil, which for cedar is one of the best oils to use. But for outdoor pieces, there are two options. Well, three if you include just letting it naturally gray. But you can either do a film finish that sits on top and protects the wood, or an oil that penetrates and soaks into the wood. A film finish will definitely last longer before it needs maintained, but when it comes time for that maintenance, it can be a lot more work. It can flake and chip off, and the whole piece needs sanded before reapplying a new finish. With oils, in theory I should never have to worry about needing to completely strip or sand these again. If they start looking a little thirsty or dry, I simply wipe on some more oil. And it's super fast too. So a penetrating oil will need maintained more frequently, but when it does, it's only a few minutes worth of work instead of hours. Here where I live, these will only be out on the deck for like half the year anyway, so it'll definitely last that long for our season, and I'll just plan on wiping on a fresh coat of oil every spring when I get them back out. Easy peasy. At least it sounds good. One last thing was adding these plastic feet so the wood is never just sitting in any water on the deck. And that's a wrap. This was a quick, enjoyable build, and I really hope you guys like it and will build some for yourself. Purchasing my plans really is the best way to support the channel, since I don't take on a bunch of sponsorships. So I really appreciate it, along with every like and comment you can throw my way. Until next time, take care.